Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Starting off another week, this time on June the 5th, as the rains, I'm glad to report, are coming to an end. What's there after? Well, a little bit of spring, well, a little bit of fall-like weather, uh, and a little bit of summer-like weather at the end of it, but it's pretty much all dry from here on out through the next week, actually. One slight chance of some showers later on down the line after midweek. I'll tell you about that, but more importantly about some dry, nice, and some different conditions. As I said, cooler and then getting more uh, like summer towards the end of your forecast period, but definitely nice in my opinion all the way around, and I think you will agree. Headlines tonight will include indictments released by Magoppa County Grand Jury last week, some arrests including a serious meth arrest over the weekend. I'll introduce to you and speak with the new head coach of the Magoffa County Boys Program and the new Magoffa County School Board member who was sworn in earlier today. Two major announcements pertaining to some major road projects affecting traffic and travel in Sagersville and Magoffa County this week in a couple of different areas and a whole lot of other news and information over the course of the next half hour. It's going to be a busy one, so be sure and stay tuned. We will go ahead and begin with just a couple of announcements. And I mentioned one of these last week and then over the course of the weekend, the Mountain Parkway expansion project forwarded me the following information. They are closing the eastbound ramps of uh, the exit 75 interchange, if you will. The eastbound ramps at the interchange of 7 uh, and the Mountain Parkway, that's both for traffic getting on and getting off of the Mountain Parkway. That will be closed and was closed as of earlier this afternoon, and that ramp uh, those ramps will be closed for about a week, almost all week long. They say it was completely necessary for crews to be able to build new ramps between Kentucky Route 7 and the Mountain Parkway. So those travelers, of course, affected by the closures uh, can access Kentucky Route 7. You have to go, of course, get on 460 uh, and westbound from the Kentucky 114 U.S. 460 intersection, just a little west of the exit 75 but eastbound ramps for exit 75 closed for the week and they do apologize and say it was simply necessary as construction and progress does indeed continue now in a separate road related project and one that i passed along to you i think on thursday of last week uh, they are to begin and i believe it is tomorrow milling up the old surface and putting down a new surface on i think pretty much all of parkway drive into downtown sagersville Yes, starting tomorrow, Parkway Drive, if possible, is a place that you'll want to avoid or steer around, and it will be that way for the upcoming next several days. The good news is they're going to have some good weather to go along with this project, so hopefully it will go as quick as possible. But the State Highway Department, uh, Transportation Department, is doing a resurfacing of basically Parkway Drive. They'll start there at the red light there at the St. Louis Catholic Church at the, at the junction of Parkway Drive and the Mountain Parkway, and then go all the way downtown to the main traffic light at the intersection of 460 downtown. So expect lane closures and delays starting tomorrow. Of course, they'll be letting traffic through and around as much as possible and to businesses, but indeed, if there is a way around that you can go and it won't affect your schedule or ultimate destination, it is certainly advised. Milling and resurfacing starting in Parkway Drive, on Parkway Drive, and in downtown tomorrow. Over the past several weeks, the Kentucky Department of Education has accepted applications and then conducted interviews of those applicants and this morning notified Superintendent of McGoffin County Schools, Scott Helton, that the department and the Commissioner of Education had selected a former educator to fill a portion of the unexpired term of Donald Helton Jr actually serving what will be in the District 5 school board seat until the next general election. This per Helton's resignation early in the year. We spoke with Superintendent Helton and the new school board member earlier today following his swearing in. The commissioner had uh, appointed uh, Doug Collinsworth, the former math teacher at the high school for a number of years. Not to say anything against the others, but it's always good to have somebody that knows something about the educational process. And we had three good candidates apply for the job. But I want to say I thank them for uh, putting the day from the time in to come in and interview for the job. But uh, the commissioner and uh, he had a couple guys come out and do the interviews. The final say goes to Frankfurt and comes out of their office. As for Mr. Collinsworth, he will sit in on his first meeting during a special session set for later this week and was excited about the future of the position after decades in education and public service. been in public service all my life. I taught 37 years high school mathematics. It'll be good. It'll, it'll take some time for uh, Doug to get caught up on some of the things we're, we're, we're facing and what we're dealing with, but uh, hopefully uh, 
in the next couple of weeks I'll try to get him uh, brought up to speed on some of the things. It, it'll take a little time, but uh, budget-wise, I'll sit down and go with it, uh, over with him the tentative budget that we approved the other day. Uh, so he's starting off at a good time as far as it's at the end of one year, starting the new year. So I'll have some time to be able to get him abreast of what's coming. Uh, we don't have a lot of money, so there's not a lot of things that we've got to, to deal with. But uh, he does, does need to know where we stand as a district and our accountability and all that, those types of things. And in a few moments, we'll talk with the new head coach of the Magoffa County High School Boys Basketball Program. More headlines, though, first and after these messages. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Just in and just perfectly priced at Gateway Motors, this 2012 Nissan Rogue all-wheel drive and this 2012 Ford Fusion, only $7,900. This 2011 Chevy Cruze loaded up $8,900. And it's a push-pull drag sale going on right now, which means however you can get it in, it's guaranteed to be worth at least $1,000. On this 2010 Nissan Sentra, priced at $7,900, or this 2011 Impala LT, priced under eight grand, and most payments under $200 a month. Come and check out Gateway Motors in Sagersville, 349 cars. It's about getting you in, getting you out, and getting you better with a little more savings and time in your back pocket. Pharmacist Jesse Rudd's Parkway Pharmacy, his assistant Megan Castle, and their team are waiting with the best advice, support, products, and savings. So make the switch to a healthier you at Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville. Hi, I'm Attorney Jeff Lovely. At my law office, we're determined to offer you and your family outstanding, cost-effective, and responsive legal services. I can help you if you've been injured in a car wreck. I'll be in your corner if you have a DUI or other criminal charges. You can file bankruptcy and stop those harassing phone calls, or I'll fight for you and your children in divorce and custody cases. For all your legal services, contact me when it matters. In Sirensville at 349-4522 and West Liberty at 743-1965. It's definitely the chili, that homemade, from scratch, hot dog chili smothering every inch of our famous footlong that makes it a one-of-a-kind taste. The only thing that can make it better is to get one for only $2.49 on Mondays and just $1.99 after 4 o'clock. Get our famous footlong with homemade chili any day of the week and get one for cheap on Mondays, only at your Sagersville Lee's. Want a big screen but don't want to have to fumble around with a big bulky phone? Then the LG G6 from Appalachian Wireless is exactly what you've been looking for. A regular size phone with more screen and less border. And while this phone was built to hold, it was also built to resist dust and water. Get the brand new LG G6 for the introductory price of $49.99 with a two-year agreement. That's $50 off the regular price. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless and East Kentucky Network Company. Tis the season, as they say, with wedding and baby registry at the seasonal shop. And as always, an endless selection of new summer shades and styles and sizes for everyone from design houses of Charlie Page and Mud Pie with all the matching accessories to go along with them. Shoes, jewelry, hats, bags, scarves, and more. And new arrivals weekly with free local delivery. All from Frazier's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. A total of seven indictments released late last week on Thursday by a sitting Magoffa County Grand Jury were held off on announcing the majority of those over the course of the weekend as authorities were attempting to serve some of those arrest warrants, some of those still pending as they're still searching for at least some of the individuals, specifically a couple of local men that I am aware of, at least two. Uh, but in addition to others which were indicted last week. Marcus Sparks of Sagersville was indicted on several counts, an eight-count indictment in his name 
for assault in the second degree, criminal mischief in the second degree, burglary in the first degree, fleeing and evading police on foot in the first degree, two counts thereof, disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and menacing. They all go back to incidents that took place around February the 13th here in McGoffin County when he caused serious physical injury to a female uh, by means of a deadly weapon. This results, I believe, from a case that happened on 460 West in Sagersville where he was reportedly uh, the one who assaulted a woman, uh, then fled the scene upon authorities' arrival or near to uh, and fled them for several uh, hours from the residence and ultimately was not obtained until some time later. Uh, he was also charged with burglary in the first degree when he entered and remained unlawfully in uh, that female's residence as well as being indicted on the other counts before mentioned fleeing and evading police, uh, as well as disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. At last report, this indictment warrant was still issued in his name, but he was not lodged, and therefore we don't believe it was sir, has been served yet and still being sought after by authorities at this time. I'll have a clear update on his arrest or pending arrest tomorrow. Seen here in an older mugshot, Carl Rudd of Sagersville was indicted by the grand jury on account of possession of a controlled substance in the first degree, DUI with aggravated circumstances in the first degree, possession of a controlled substance not in its original or proper container, and possession of an open alcoholic beverage container. All these related to an incident back in February of this year as well, where the grand jury witnessed Deputy Neil Adams from the Kentucky, or excuse me, from the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department uh, had opened the case uh, after he was found to be in possession of drugs and alcohol and under the influence of either or while being behind the wheel of a vehicle. A former Sagersville woman was indicted on, on a charge of perjury in the first degree. This was an indictment summons, however, and not an arrest warrant issued in her name by the Commonwealth. But nevertheless, Peggy Marshall, uh, formerly of Sagersville, was indicted on account of perjury in the first degree for testimony that it appears as though she gave on or around April the 16th of 2015 in McGoffin County Circuit Court. We believe it is testimony as related to a divorce court proceeding in which was brought into question in which she was subsequently indicted for. And with a flat gap arrest, Virginia Estep indicted on a single count of theft by deception. However, that is theft by deception of cold checks $10,000 or more. Her indictment reads, which uh, was brought forth after Trooper Dustin Thompson of the Kentucky State Police brought the case before the grand jury, says that on or around March the 14th of this year and through about the end of the same month, the accused committed the offense of theft by deception, including cold checks over $10,000, when she obtained a total of three checks totaling some $33,000 uh, in an effort to deprive or to steal from a named individual in the indictment by creating or reinforcing a false impression as to her actual intention, but defrauding to some extent an individual out of $33,000 by the means of cold checks. And in other court-related matters, an arrest over the course of the weekend has resulted in the incarceration of a Bobby Shepard of Sagersville, I do believe. The Kentucky State Police reportedly made a traffic stop on a vehicle he, that was being operated by Jason Nichols, which was which a passenger inside that vehicle was identified as Bobby Shepard. He was said to have been a passenger, and as the officer spoke with the suspects, he noticed that Shepard appeared to be nervous in nature, and he asked the driver for consent to search the vehicle, which he did, the driver stating that there was anything that the officer found that it didn't belong to him. Nevertheless, the officer and deputy tipping with the, Kentucky, with the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department, my apologies, approached the vehicle and asked Shepard to get out. He was not wearing a shirt, only had a pair of jogging pants on, says the citation. And as Shepard got out of the vehicle, the authorities noticed the left front pocket of his sweatpants or jogging pants was pulled out. And they looked into the seat where he had been seated, and they found a metal container, a metal Altoids container, if you will. Inside were three plastic bags which contained a hard glass-like substance which was consistent with being a high grade of crystal methamphetamine, also a straw and four empty clear plastic bags. Shepard was informed that he was under arrest and placed in handcuffs. They also continued to search him and the vehicle. It was also noticed that later after being arrested, 
Shepard was placed in the rear of the cruiser, and then once he got out of the, once he was retrieved out of the cruiser, at some point, the officer found several empty bags. It's my understanding that Shepard was feared to have possibly ingested several bags, maybe ten to or the contents of ten to twenty bags of methamphetamine. He was taken to an area hospital for medical clearance and or treatment, but ultimately lodged in the Big Sandy Detention Center on account of trafficking in a controlled substance, methamphetamine, tampering with physical evidence, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I've got more headlines, much more, right after these words. Stay tuned. Wanting you to have a healthier life means providing access to quality, affordable health care. And to do exactly that, Hope Family Medical Center offers full dental care with Dr. Pratt and his team, a pediatrician team of three doctors and nurses and moms, complete health care by family physician Dr. Kelly Pratt and nurse practitioners Mildred Sizemore, Gail Faria, Shannon Conley, and Heather Blair. Behavioral Health Services with Kimberly Davis with in-house lab testing and results, in-house x-ray and pharmacy. And all the caring, knowledge and experience that these medical professionals represent. At Hope Family Medical Center. Hey, we got a big sale going on right here at Broadway Auto Sales in Paintsville, Kentucky. And because of the big sale, we're just like giving these vehicles away. And to prove they've gone bananas at Broadway Auto in Paintsville with their biggest sale yet, they're also giving away $5,000 in cold, hard cash guaranteed Saturday the 10th where between now and then they're looking for trade-ins. They've cut all the prices and all the inventory, and all you have to do is come in and register for free. You might be the next $5,000 winner here, and it will be given away June the 10th at 5 p.m. on a Saturday. We are all human. Because we're not perfect, we tend to make mistakes. Unfortunately, some mistakes are severe and carry more consequences than others. If you have been hurt in a car wreck, a truck wreck, or because of someone's mistake, reckless or careless behavior, you deserve help with your medical expenses, lost wages, and serious permanent pain and injuries that you have been made to suffer and will continue to suffer for the rest of your life. If you have been injured, I can help. I'm attorney Don Wayne McFarland. Call me and let me go to work for you. 349-9000. Much more than diesel specialist, Black Smoke Performance is turning out excellent auto body collision paint and repair results with free quotes and estimates on everything from insurance jobs to that ding you got in the driveway. Custom lift kits, bed liners, winches and accessories, and full diagnostics and repair on anything gas or diesel from brakes to fluid changes to major auto repair. If you want it fixed, lifted, painted, customized, or just maintained, just call on the team at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville, 100 May Drive, or 349-8785. Like it or not, spring means mowing and trimming and tilling and pressure washing and fun things like grilling and swimming. And get what you need for all of it at Parkway Gun and Pond where everything is new or gently used for pennies on the dollar. And where they'll loan you cash today on anything worth a dollar. 349 Pond. Yes, Logan makes the best truck bodies on the market, and they also have a fully stocked warehouse of dump body parts, PTOs, hydraulic pumps, hoists, anything you need to get back on the road. And they are a full-service steel and aluminum service center. They keep I-beam, channel, angle, pipe, round rod, rebar, expanded metal, sheet metal, and aluminum all in stock. And if you've got a big project, they do commercial manufacturing to your specs. Logan since 1904. Before we introduce our new head coach for the McGuffey County High School Boys Program as the FBI and what would seem as though the world, as I've noticed uh, over social media and the like over the course of the weekend, are asking where in the world is Eric C. Khan. There is no update at this hour on his location since he disabled his ankle monitoring device over the course of the weekend while on home incarceration. There have been reports from co-workers who have been quoted as saying that they have heard of Cuba as a possible destination. None of that has been confirmed. He, of course, was facing 12 years after pleading guilty to one of the many counts against him to be sentenced in about a month's time. He was also ordered to pay back some $50 million or so in restitution. He was also set to be one of the main or key witnesses in a trial starting today, a trial which is underway this week, as was scheduled for one of the three indicted in that case, two members, two others 
alongside Eric C. Kahn, one being Judge David Doherty, but the other also being Dr. Alfred Bradley Adkins, who is a psychologist from Pikeville. His trial began this week on schedule, regardless of whether or not Kahn will be brought in to testify should he be apprehended, as the federal authorities do have an arrest warrant in his name. In local sporting news, after the resignation of boys head coach Robbie Russell and after about a half dozen or so individuals, mostly from McGoffin County, applied for the position, I'm told. McGoffin County High School Principal Chris Meadows, officially earlier today, as you're about to hear, named the new head coach this afternoon, who is not necessarily, well, he's just not a new coach by any means. I'd like to start by saying that we did have a lot of good applicants, a lot of um, solid um, good people right here in the county that um, did apply for the job. Um, uh, after reviewing those, um, we did decide to go with um, Coach Scott Castle uh, because he had such good experience. He had been a coach uh, at the high school level, both as an assistant and a head coach with our girls program, and had just actually been out of it this past year. And when we looked at that, uh, we thought it was uh, particularly important to go with someone who had uh, coaching experience at that level. After being assistant head coach for a number of years, Castle went on to become the head coach of the Lady Hornets basketball organization beginning in 2012. And in the four years at the helm, he had a 70 and 44 record with the girls teams also bringing home two 57th district championships and one 15th region runner-up title. And Castle earlier today in his telephone interview tells me that he had actually resigned from coaching a little more than a year ago for reasons that have now changed and allowed him once again to get back into the sport as head coach. To be honest with you, I, I really didn't have any intention on uh, getting back into coaching. Uh, when I stepped down as a head girls basketball coach back in uh, 2015, um, you know, it was a time factor with, with my work schedule um, at that time. And Presently, my work has, has slowed off significantly as far as the hours uh, that I can get back and, and do things. And, you know, I really didn't think that a position would ever come open at, at the, the high school for the boys' job. And uh, whenever Coach Russell uh, tendered his resignation, um, you know, we sat down and talked, talked about it as, as a family. and. And uh, we just decided that, uh, you know, to, to give it a shot. I'm really excited, uh, but at the same time, I'm nervous uh, because, you know, as a, as a new coach coming in, uh, people have high, high expectations. And, uh, but, uh, you know, we just do the best we can. Uh, but I, I'm excited to get back in the gym, excited to be with the, the kids and, and hopefully, uh, you know, form some relationships with these, these boys like I have uh, with my girls' teams over the past uh, several years. And while classes may have only been out now for just a little more than a week or so, there was indeed a sense of urgency, if you will, not just to get the head coach position filled, but to get it filled so that they could get caught up on summer ball, which has already started for other schools. And they're already, according to Castle and Meadows, putting together a schedule with their first meeting coming this Wednesday night for any and all interested players. I talked to Coach Castle this morning early and uh, he and uh, Mr. West, our athletic director, are already in the works of scheduling some summer games and that will come out very soon, the schedule. Uh, he is having a meeting here at the high school this Wednesday night, June 7th at 8.30 p.m. here in the cafeteria with all boys that are interested in playing. Uh, any student that played the previous year will not need a physical at this time, but if any students decide to play that have not played, they would need to have a physical before uh, participating in any summer ball. That's right. That meeting once again this Wednesday night at 8.30 in the cafeteria of the New Magoffa County High School. And that meeting is for any and all interested players. And they'll pick it up directly after Wednesday night's meeting with a game traveling to East Ridge, on Thursday for some summer ball. It's going to be a busy summer for the boys at the McGough County High School, and it all starts under a new head coach this Wednesday night and Thursday. 
I got a couple of birthdays to kick off tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. First is a very happy 72nd birthday to this fella, Ronald Watkins, with a whole lot of love and best wishes, Ronald, from Joseph, Cassie, and Ruby. They love you, Daddy, and say happy, happy birthday. Happy 72nd to Ronald Watkins. And I got a birthday wish going out to Kathy Minix from a from a very, let's just say a very, very long list of family and friends and co-workers. Kathy, happy birthday to you. We hope you've had a good birthday today. The Ramey Park pool was closed today because the weather was just not nice. Tomorrow, though, it's due to some maintenance. They've got some maintenance going on. Got to make some repairs that will require the pool to be shut down tomorrow. One day should get it. They should be back open and up for the rest of the summer thereafter. But the Ramey Park pool closed tomorrow. You can still call and book a party, I bet, though. 349-5102 is the number. The McGough County School Summer Feeding Program is going on now through July the 18th at all these sites beginning anywhere from 11 to 12 30 in the afternoon for about 20 to 30 minutes at each of these locations that's a free lunch for all mcgoffa county students kids who want to go to either of those locations sagersville grade school this is the last time i'll remind you because they're already one day in their summer camp started today at the family resource center is hosting and that's for all sgs students no cost it's free Parents get them some breakfast, they get them out the door, and they'll take care of lunch and a snack and all the fun for the rest of the day from 9 till 3. And also all this week, Vacation Bible School at the Sagersville First Baptist Church, 545 to 8 nightly through Thursday night. And the next McGoffa County Community Blood Drive is this Thursday starting at 1.30 in the Kentucky Blood Center Blood Mobile in front of the Sigersville IGA. They're giving away tickets to Kings Island Holiday World. The list goes on Everyone who donates gets registered, and you get registered to win a new Toyota. That's a 2017 Toyota Highlander as well. I don't know why you would need any more encouragement. You can save a life, maybe someone you know and love, and possibly win some really great prizes. It takes just a few minutes this Thursday in the parking lot in front of the Sagersville IGA. If you've got an announcement, you want her birthday anniversary for your church, group, organization, any nonprofits, this right here in front of you is how you can tell me so I can tell everyone about it. And one local obituary to pass along tonight in honor of 79-year-old Nora Bailey Mullins of Half Mountain, who passed away yesterday, survived by her husband Harlan. She's also survived by her sons, Ronnie and Ricky Mullins, and daughters Jeanette Estes and Patricia Wireman. Visitation is going to start this Wednesday after 6 and then up until services that start Thursday at 1. Visitation and services from the McGoffin County Funeral Home, who sponsors our obituary list. Burial will take place at the Green Carpenter Cemetery at Half Mountain in her honor. Well, the rains are ending tonight, but they're not over tonight. If you're catching the early show, these showers and that line to our north moving in a southeasterly fashion. Uh, the first may be a glancing blow, and the second, if it holds together, but could give us, as it's giving some folks in northern Kentucky, a few good storms and a few good downpours as well. should be brief, and that should be just about it. And from there, we're on to some... Well, we're on to some much nicer conditions and a nice long run with one little bump in the road. Mostly cloudy tonight. Chance of showers to the tune of 40%. And that's probably a good estimate still. Uh, those showers, I think, are going to hold together for the most part. And most of us will get in on some more rain tonight. On a light degree, I'm hoping. Fog afterwards. Tomorrow, though, look at this. For your Tuesday... Mostly cloudy early, but then becoming sunny. 73 tomorrow. Look how cool we get. Uh, party cloudy skies tomorrow night, more fog, and then that fog lingering Wednesday morning. 69 for daytime highs midweek and a low of 53. But you'll notice still dry, partly sunny, and a nice, cool fall-like fall -like day midweek. But that is where temperatures will bottom out. We'll pick up just a couple of degrees Thursday, 71, 53, more sunshine. There is a 20%, a very slight chance of some showers Thursday afternoon. I'm just putting it in there basically to cover all my bases because I'm hopeful we'll not even have to deal with that. And from there after, temperatures go back to more like a summer schedule. 77 and sunny Friday, 81 and sunny on your Saturday. By Sunday, this next weekend, mid-80s and more sunshine. 
So going to wrap it up for tonight. I'm off to a Sagittal City Council meeting, and I'll be back here before you tomorrow night with that and other news that you'll only see here. So I hope to see you then. Good night. Thanks for watching.